Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena. Today we're gonna be playing some Brute Funking deck which I've stolen from a top player and we're gonna rate how it will work in uh, nowadays meta. So we're gonna start things off against Mysterious Mind who by the first looks will be playing something similar to Steel Bait but with a... But with a digger, because he cycled digger if I rem recall it first place. So we're gonna just be playing right now brute. No reason why not to. And right now he just have to defend that because that's that's obviously already a very threatening push for him. He's gonna be having a very cool mortar to defend that, and that's why his defense will very promptly hold. And Funking just going for the tower. Very very lucky interaction for me and I'm gonna get a thousand damage heads up very early on so that was a very cool thing to see I'm gonna cycle phone horde at the bridge see what's gonna be he his response and he's gonna be responding with swordsman which is a very natural response at the same time he's gonna be playing mortar so if I were to assume he wants some of his damage back and I will promptly give him to it be because there's no reason to just keep all the damage for yourself i'm gonna use bullets on this bomb girl because it's pretty much the best card he has in the entire deck and that's gonna be a very early tower down so very cool to see i'm gonna play a phone heart here uh, ju just to make things more annoying and i think mysterious might will resign very early on so that was a very cool game to see and yeah that's also a very cool opening game because this brute deck uh, can be very uh, dangerous uh, very often so basically the first game was very quick so i didn't uh, manage to explain the main premise of this deck so uh, we're gonna be playing a uh, basically a normal brute funking deck which works like another decks with Brute and Fawn King, uh, but uh, with the exception that we will have a crap ton of Swarm cards and uh, we'll have two Light Spells, so our best matchups will be pretty much these matchups that have a Swarm uh, cards to defend themselves, so it's gonna be a pretty aggressive matchup mirror-wise and at the same time, we'll have also a good matchup against bait decks. Also, very well-known interaction is bullets plus blitz. Kill the piercing archer, which is like sometimes a life savior. And I think in this game, it will come in handy as well. Because, well, my opponent has both bomb girl and a piercing archer. So it definitely will be helpful at some point. Unfortunately, his bomb girl like, is getting too much value for my liking. I don't want to use the bullets <coughs> against her, but hey, I might be forced to because he's just protect protecting her with uh, his life and that's absolutely uh, reasonable. He's just getting so much value and right now he's playing Piercing Archer in a very odd manner. I'm gonna play Ghost here and no, no, no mate, I'm, I'm playing bullets. I wanted this ghost to finish out the piercing archer, but it's not happening this time. He kind of overcommitted with these apes. He got some damage, I would say even pretty nice damage, but it's absolutely not okay if you try to chase me like this. I'm gonna protect my fawn king with the fawn horde. I'm gonna play a brute at the bridge and try to just create a demolition attack. And I'm gonna get the cannon. <coughs> Brood will head straight into the tower, even Funking will get a charge, which, well, my attack was already successful and it's still going, I think it will just take a tower and, yeah, that's, that's very good, that, that's very good to see because right now he'll have a good counter push and I had to have some safety net, safety net in case he will... Okay. In case he will get my tower back uh, in the counter push. So we're gonna be playing right now Brute here to... Okay, I didn't expect that. Also Piercing Archer somehow sniping this ghost. Like, I don't know how it's possible, but it did. So very lucky interaction for him. Certainly he didn't plan that. 
Uh, th there's no way out plan that, so... If he did plan that, he must be a strategy genius, so... That's gonna be the game. Fortunately, we have won. Uh, it was very scary deck if he, if we were to allow him to start attacking us, but we were on the attacking side for the entire time, so luckily we will take the win right here. And right now we're gonna get a game against Burger, so... As far as I know, Burger... Okay, he is playing Funking right now, so... Uh, previously today I was facing him a couple of times and every time he was playing his bizarre air deck it's not like he's a top player or something but he, okay he, he's gonna quit very early too early for my liking okay so I'm gonna just take the game try to skip it at least mentally and yeah see you in the next game and we're up against another player who I actually think I faced the first time. He's gonna be called Fimo Sedem. Wow. I'm even impressed that it's within a limit of 15 characters because this name uh, seems very long. And yeah, f for that reason, we're gonna be playing Ghost in the Bag because I'm kind of scared of what he's capable of. I'm gonna play some. Stone phones here. Unfortunately, he will convert one of my stone phones into apes, which is obviously not perfect because in a perfect world uh, he doesn't get any conversions. And yeah, right now I'm gonna just try to eliminate his threats. His bomb girl is locked onto the tower. Right now we are playing a phone horde. He's playing another necromancer, so it looks like we're gonna have a very very tough matchup on our hand. I actually wanted to zap Blitz buff. Uh, uh, fortunately, I didn't. This will turn into Ape as well, so yeah. Uh, Necromancer, as a general rule of thumb, will be very efficient against our deck, but uh, nothing to be worried. We are not dead lost yet. We're just down 1k damage. It's still a deficit that you can come back from. Unfortunately, this Funking won't stop at this Archer. I want them to play Brute in front, but since he won't stop, the, we won't be on time. I think that's, yeah, that's gonna be a kill and very, very big blunder out of my opponent. He shouldn't definitely play a Necromancer against this Fong King. There were better responses and this Bomb Girl also stutters, so AI was very cooperative with him in the first half of the game. Right now, I kinda get uh, the better end of the interactions. My ghost will absolutely get shredded. I'm gonna try to get kills on some things. Right now I'm scared of him playing Necromancer because I have a lot of swarm cards right now down on the board, but he's not playing it, so I might as well reset with ghost and okay, he's okay, he, he's right now going back right again uh, to the annoying part. And I think with that being said, we're gonna try to just uh, attack my opponent because he just overextended with playing cards at the bridge and that's just not good news for his tower because it's going down and in a very elegant manner. So we're gonna take the tower down right here against, I would say, very annoying matchup because like a Bomb Girl and Necromancer, even though you have response against them, uh, it's not a comfy deck to play against, so yeah, very happy to see that we have managed to get this win clearly very easy and yeah, Necromancer, very good card against this deck if you want to counter it for whatever reason, there's only one player that plays this deck and it's not even me, I'm just recording the video about it and uh, yeah, if you want to counter this deck use Necromancer and Bomb Girl. And we are in the game number 4 against Mysterious Mind, who's gonna open up very aggressively. I'm gonna try to get a good blitz here to stop every single bit of damage coming at my tower. And that was a pretty much 5-4. Holy cow, it was for 9 trade, now 11. That was very good trade for us, and we will get still the damage advantage. So, I think after these trades... There's no reason not to go in because he must be low on mana and that's why we're gonna test him. 
whether or not it's true and I know it's true so yeah he's playing seven mana defense right now so it's gonna be definitely worth it for him I'm gonna right now play a phone horde here just test his defenses uh, further more and he's getting a very nice cycle to just save the day and Fortunately for him, because it was looking very scary, he's gonna be playing Remy Ellie's deck, which is Digger with Bone Blasters and Piercing Archer Cyclone variation. Very annoying to see sometimes, but at the same time I have absolutely no trouble with fighting this deck, because we have the Bullets plus Blitz combo, which like I've said previously, deals very well, and I mean very well with Piercing Archer, and I can expect other bridge, there's no reason for him not to play that, but he's gonna be playing uh, a Bone Blaster, so that's gonna be that, I'm gonna right now just test his defenses again, playing Fawn Horde here, this Brute should deal with Bomb Tower at least, I would love him to deal with that, and the Fawn King will get a charge, so very cool interaction right here, he was just too low on mana to do this place, I think these Bomb Blasters were just too aggressive altogether, and we're gonna grab the tower, so very cool stuff to see, he's spamming outstanding for whatever reason, he was aggressive in the first place, so I don't know what's outstanding about it, maybe the fact that I was able to actually punish it unlike his other opponents and yeah we're gonna just go for a three star another win against mysterious very convincing one and yeah we're gonna just jump straight into the game number five of today's video and we're back against burger again so like you see many reoccurring faces that's unfortunately the reality of the game that uh, if you uh, want to play many consecutive games in a row, you'll probably just face the same players, but at the same time, it's also kinda nice, because uh, while you don't get like too much of a player diversity, you pretty much can more focus on getting nice matchups against those players that you kinda know you will end up uh, against. That's gonna be very tough defense, and I think I'm gonna... Okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna have to uh, play a Fawn Horde additionally, so I don't get too much damage. Frustrated, these devils, like, they're getting everywhere. Uh, anyhow, uh, I kinda like this format where I'm uh, meeting uh, same people over and over again, because it kinda means that I can just test my various decks against them, see where I'm stronger and where I'm weaker, and not just getting... Uh, uh, the random matchups uh, all over again and uh, trying to improve that way because it's definitely possible but I think it's just not that reliable if you want to improve you should be practicing with a set uh, party of people and uh, not with a scatter one because it kinda uh, uh, can give you a better instance of uh, whether you're improving or not based on their performance as well, like uh, your player pool you're facing is more determined and that's usually fine. Also I'm hard losing this game, he's gonna be playing both mothers which is like mother devil and mother skeleton and we won't be having big spells so we'll have to be very careful with uh, our small spell usages and placing cards like brute or funking because if we ever commit a brute when we shouldn't, uh, it's gonna be very hard for us to like uh, survive the counter push because if you're, if my opponent will recognize that we have a bad hand or something, he'll absolutely have the upper hand till the end of the game and we obviously don't want to let that happen. This ghost will be very clutch here just killing the mother skeleton. Right now we're gonna just go for the attack on the both sides hope for some good shenanigans to happen, right now I'm gonna just go with a phone horde because why not, I don't think he has a good response against that and apparently I was right, he has only cannon and this cannon dies very quickly and right now he's playing steel hammer but it's not even enough, we're gonna cycle another brute and phone king on the opposite side, he manages to defend one but doesn't even want to defend the opposite, I think I'm just gonna use some spells against his tower it may be not enough, yeah, 15 HP, right here, we're gonna take the right side, and that's gonna be it for today's video, 
very cool deck to play with, especially if you like uh, the decks that have double small spells, they can be very aggressive, like they're not solid because sometimes the your opponent will just stack a very big push and there's nothing pretty much you can do about that except like micro and prey. And uh, that's the weakness of the decks with two small spells, definitely not recommended for beginners, but for the advanced players, definitely fun deck to use and play. Uh, one thing to add uh, additionally is that this deck sucks against Viking Bird Spam, so I don't know why Mr. Ball is playing with it, but apparently he's having some success, so I'm not gonna complain about it. So yeah. I think I'm gonna just wrap up uh, everything here. Thanks for watching till the end of the video. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you enjoy this Boom Arena content. And yeah, I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Boom Arena. Take care.